Hey everybody, it's Scott Simcoe Spring Service and today I want to talk about our two inch trailer lift blocks. Uh, we've done a couple of videos of these in our past and I'll pin them up in the top over here somewhere for you to take a look at. So I wanted to talk to you today about everything that we learned during the manufacturing process of building these blocks. Now I haven't done a manufacturing run of this many blocks of one particular kind before. So when you make that many of something, you usually find a way to do it better, faster, or more efficiently. And that's what I want to talk about today. So minus the center bolt and the holes, obviously, these blanks we had manufactured at a local fabrication shop, they have a programmable bandsaw. And so what we do is we just give them the specifications of what type of tubing that we use, and their bandsaw will actually cut it in increments. So we had it set to one and three quarter inches, and they were able to just keep cutting them and not have to feed them in every single time. So I would continue manufacturing them this exact same way and just put in orders for blanks. Worked out really well in our favor. One of the things that I think that cost us a great deal of time and effort and was actually quite painful to do physically and mentally was marking and drilling all of the holes. Uh, we had to drill a 5 8 hole on this end and we had to drill a 3 8 hole oversized on this side. Actually 13 30 seconds if you want to be exact. Um, we had to make it so that we can fit these little nubs in there to allow the pin to go into the axle. Stay. So just marking them, we actually had a kind of a cool little jig. We were using like a roofing square to drag lines across and it actually worked out fairly decently well. And in fact, I would use that technique for small runs in the future. But it took us like two hours, maybe two and a half hours to mark both sides. So you're talking about like 300 to 350 marks that we had to make. So if you can do it every like 20 to 30 seconds or less, like it took a long time. So that was one thing that we thought could be improved on and we were trying to figure out a way to do that. Which leads us into the next thing. In this little clip here, you can see us hammering out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of punch marks. Once again, 350 plus on our two anvils here. And this was backbreaking. Um, another thing that I thought, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Uh, this also took probably about the same amount of time period, about two and a half hours to do. So you're talking about five hours work, just marking and punching them. And my back was sore for hours afterwards. And then that leads directly to drilling. I was thinking that if there is a way that we could mark punch and drill them all out in sequence without having to do three steps and we can do it in just one, that would save us a ton of work. So this is a thought that I had. Let's go over to my drill press. So over here at the drill press, one thing I noticed that was causing me a lot of uh, difficulties was this clamp. Uh, it's not high quality. We bought it for like five bucks at an auction, homemade, not really that good, is if I had a high quality clamp, I could clamp it down to the deck I could put some sort of stopper here. So what I can do is actually push these in, push them up against the stopper, wind the crank in and clamp it. And then I can set my depth with my movable table here and get perfect holes every single time. And because the clamp would be bolted down to the deck here, it wouldn't cause me so much fatigue. I think it'd be a lot easier for drilling and I think I would get a lot better and more accurate results. So with a high quality clamp like that, Every single time that I would put a block in, it would be repeatable. And every single time I wouldn't have to punch or mark a hole. I would just have one with like a template that I could uh, use as a guide to where I want the exact hole to, set it up, set my machine, and then just drill holes. And then if I have to stop and come back a couple days later, I can just put the template block back in there and reset the machine. So I think this would be really, really crucial for repeatable production and cut down on like six to eight hours of work, maybe even more. So really, really, really handy idea. So these are the standard center bolts that we get and we use them in all our Chevy pickup trucks. We use them in all sorts of different vehicles. And I get these from my normal supply and they're relatively cheap. Um, I priced out these before I started and they were 30% more. So I decided to just cut these down. However, that did take like <sighs> cutting them down with the chop saw was proving to be counterproductive because it would leave a little burr on there. Then I'd have to go over to the bench grinder, grind the little burr off. Then we tried a stupider way, which was welding them all together and cutting them with a torch. It didn't really save any time, but it was fun. I want to try it out. 
Um, so after spending that many hours on there, finding out the cost per hour and stuff like that, it's by far easier to just buy little nubs like this. Purchase some, put them in, weld them in. Uh, they come with a little oil coating on them, but you can actually clean that off pretty easily with a little bit of Arsol or Brick Clean. I, I'd say that out of everything, that this was probably the largest waste of time that we had. Uh, those four hours or three hours or however long it took us for us to chop them all, grind them and prep them for uh, install was it, it felt painful because of how easy these were to purchase um, I thought it wouldn't take as long but it took forever so so now I got a whole bag full of them ready to go if I ever need them so yeah if you want to buy these uh, lift blocks they're little two inch lift blocks for utility trailers you can get them online at our website at www.simcospring.com and if you want them for a two and three eighths axle diameter, it's TLBK 238. And if you want it for a three inch diameter axle, it's TLBK 300. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description down below. But yeah, kind of cool. I liked it, I enjoyed it. Um, we'll probably be keeping making these uh, in our shop. And next time we do a production run on these things, hopefully it'll go a lot faster, smoother. And uh, uh, yeah, and we'll, hopefully catch any kind of more hiccups that we see in the production phase and uh, I'll probably show that next time too so if you're interested in this kind of content make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you next time have a good day all right bye